on your weekly news show. I'm here in Downing Street, the home and headquarters of the government, to find out more about this trust and the issues she has to deal with. And stand by for Never Seen Before Ocean. Hi, I'm Lucy. Hi, I'm Sheena. And join us on FYI to dive into the unexplored ocean. Hi there. It's been a time we will never forget, where the whole country almost stood still to remember our queen. Tens of millions of us in the UK tuned in to watch the state funeral and many of you even managed to join the crowds in London and Windsor. Some of you have contacted the FYI team with your thoughts on a day we will never forget. Watching the Queen's funeral, well, I felt obviously a sadness, but mixed with a sense of pride. A pride to be among the many thousands watching with me from Hyde Park. The part that definitely struck me the most were the hymns, for the entire park stood up in respect and gratitude to Her Majesty the Queen. The most emotional part of the funeral was when the corgis came for a last minute goodbye. I think this definitely does feel like the end of an era because there will not be any queen for a while. If I got one final message to the queen, I would say thank you for all your commitment to this country and the Commonwealth, your lifelong service of care and humility for all of us. The royal family continue to mourn in private. We won't see much of them for a while. But for all of us, it's a time of massive change. We now have a new head of state, King Charles III, and of course, a new prime minister, Liz Truss. As life returns to normal, Liz Truss is under pressure to deal with some massive problems for the country. So Brayden headed to Downing Street to find out more. Hey Brayden, so you made it to Downing Street then. What have you found out about our new prime minister? Hey Maya, so you're right, her name is Liz Truss and she used to be in charge of international affairs but now she's in charge of the country and she's moved into the government HQ, the home of the government, number 10 Downing Street which is right there. And she has some urgent things to take care of, right? Yeah, so she's got two main issues that she has to deal with. Number one being the rising costs of things like food and energy and the other one being the war in Ukraine. I've put together a little report to explain it all. Here it is. Liz Truss got the most votes from members of the ruling Conservative Party to replace Boris Johnson. He resigned in July when a growing number of Conservative politicians criticised his leadership and behaviour during the pandemic. So here's what I found out about Liz Truss. She was the Foreign Secretary, the government minister in charge of the UK's relationship with other countries. And she does change her mind a bit. This party unlike Labour, will not duck and weave from debating the issues people are interested in. She started her political career in a different party, the Liberal Democrats, and then switched over to the Conservatives. She supported the campaign for the UK to stay in the European Union, but then supported Brexit after a majority of the public voted to leave. Well, let's hope she doesn't change her mind about being the Prime Minister. She's got some really big issues to deal with right here in the UK, urgently. The price for just about everything is soaring at the moment, from food and clothes to petrol, electricity and gas. That's because they're all in short supply. The COVID pandemic meant that many things were not made for a long time. And the war in Ukraine has also led to a shortage of food ingredients we get from the country. Russia, which invaded Ukraine, is also making it difficult for many countries to get a hold of gas and oil, leading to sky high energy bills. Since she's been back to work, the Prime Minister has been in face-to-face -face talks with world leaders, including President Biden. The talks have focused on the war in Ukraine. In recent days, the Ukrainian army has taken back control of a huge area of the country from invading Russian troops. Liz Truss is also hoping world leaders can work together to bring down the cost of things. Meanwhile, she has announced a limit on how much all families and businesses in the UK can be charged for gas and electricity and plans to help our parents keep more of the money they earn. So while the Conservative Party was focused on electing a new Prime Minister and a new leader for many weeks, very little was done to help struggling families. Liz Truss, though, has promised to get us through these tough times. And I've got hold of some FYI viewers to get their opinion. Hi, guys. Hi. Hello. So what do you make of the new Prime Minister? 
I'm really glad that Liz Truss is the Prime Minister now, that she is focusing on the cost of living crisis. I struggle to agree with the points that Kai made. Her response to the cost of living crisis has seemed to be to decrease taxes for the wealthy while leaving the poorest in our society in the exact same position. And that doesn't seem like really the way to go. Right now, I'm not sure how much I trust her yet, but I think time will tell. So what do you want from the new Prime Minister? One thing that I want from Liz Trust is complete honesty and transparency during her time in office. Yeah, I agree with Lily on like the honesty and stuff. So if we can't trust someone that high, then it won't work out that much. I would personally like to see how she deals with the cost of living crisis, as this is affecting many people and a lot of people are struggling. My parents uh, are considering, instead of using electricity, just buying a couple of light-up candles, electric ones, uh, and putting them around the house so that we don't have to waste electricity throughout the winter. My mum is a mobile hairdresser, so she's using her car all the time. And I feel like the gas prices and petrol prices have went up. It's like really hard if she's needing to get from one side of the town to the other. I think one thing that I hope the Prime Minister does improve upon is school uniforms and how they need to lower prices on that because families are struggling to afford uniforms here and the cost to get my uniform and stationery is around 300 to 400 pounds. Yeah it's ridiculously expensive I agree more does need to be done there so thank you so much for your time guys and thanks for joining me. So as we know the Prime Minister has a lot to do so Maya back to you in the studio from Downing Street. Thanks Braden. nice work. So, of course, another issue we hope Liz Truss will be dealing with is climate change. Coming up, an exclusive report from experts who have dived deep into unexplored ocean to see how climate change is affecting marine life. So, while some of us may have been really excited to get back to school, some of you may have had knots in your stomach. Let's face it, starting a new school or a new year group is daunting enough, but there's still a huge amount of us being bullied too. It's just not on. In a moment, we'll investigate what to do if you're being bullied. But first, check out this new survey that reveals the long-term effects of bullying. The Diana Award anti-bullying campaign questioned more than a thousand families. 73% of parents said that they were bullied at school, which left them with low confidence when they became adults. No wonder then that 58% of parents are worried about us being bullied as we go back to school. 64% of children said that they've experienced bullying in school and many say that they have changed their physical appearance and pretended to be something they're not in order to fit in at school. So what do you do if you're bullied? Well, I got hold of Tamar in Manchester. She was bullied at school, but she got through it and she's now an ambassador for the Diana Award anti-bullying campaign. Hey Tamar. So, um, I understand that you were bullied at school, but what actually happened? I understand you're comfortable sharing it. I was looked upon differently by others. Well, really, it was a particular group of people. And at first I thought all these people were my friends because we'd hang out together, we'd sit together. I was on free school meals and often they'd make jokes about that. And then it went from jokes to me being the one that was kind of left out. I said, like, hey, like, what's the problem? Why can't we just hang out normally? And they said, and I quote, once you change the color of your skin, then we will take you seriously. Wow. I'm, I'm really sorry you had to experience that. But how did you get through the bullying in the end? I mean, it seems pretty tough. For a while, I kept it to myself. But after that comment, so I spoke to one of the teachers and a trusted adult. Um, and because they got into trouble for it, I also talked to the rest of the group also because yes, there was one person that was being the main leader and the perpetrator and saying these comments. However, that didn't erase the fact that the people that I also considered my friends would not say anything. Now I have better friends, people that accept me for who I am. And I'm glad that I made that first step. Yeah, I'm glad that you didn't say friends with those people. They sound horrible. Um, but what advice would you give to anybody who's being bullied or has been bullied? They only have as much power over you 
as you would let them take the first step of speaking to someone. If anything, it can be almost like an empowering thing because yes, when I stood up for myself, I wasn't just standing up for me in a way. I felt like I was doing something for all the people that were treated the same way. Thank you, that's really good advice. And thank you for your time. I'm so sorry you had to go through all of that. Victims of bullying shared their stories and advice in an episode of Kidversation. This is the series from Sky Kids FYI that gives people our age the chance to have a big conversation about the issues that affect us. They didn't think that I belonged in this country as such, so they would just say, go back home to where you belong. You should check it out on Sky Kids On Demand or head to our webpage, first.news FYI, and click on the Kidversation link. Rising temperatures means ice caps are melting and making sea levels rise. The islands of the Maldives will be the first in line to disappear beneath the sea. And it's not just bad news for humans. Marine life and coral reefs are also in danger from warmer waters. But did you know, 80% of our oceans have never been explored. So for the first time ever, an international group of scientists are exploring the Indian Ocean around the Maldives, from the surface to 1,000 feet below. They're on a mission to find out how climate change is affecting marine life, and perhaps even adapting to survive. Using submarines and robots, the scientists are heading into unexplored areas of the Indian Ocean. So stand by for Never Seen Before Ocean. We asked the group of scientists to send FYI video diaries of their expeditions so far. We've been given permission by the ship to dive through this beautiful We are in the Maldives, we're surrounded by atolls that goes all the way down to the seafloor. In the shallower areas, there were lots of corals growing. And as we come down here to 120 meters, there's this beautiful wall um, that we can see. And there's lots of different species living in these little caverns and caves. Corals in general are really important areas as habitat for different types of species of fish and invertebrates. These surveys are really important as they capture what lives at these different depths. Well, the expedition continues, and after a long day of diving in the Maldives, Lucy and Sheena join me now. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. So, Lucy, first off, what's the main aim of the expedition? So, on our expedition, we're trying to try and find out what lives down to about a thousand meters and why do they live there. Would you say that your expedition has produced any worrying results? So, we like to say that it takes a long time to actually really get to the crux of what is going on in our ocean. And there isn't a lot known about the deep sea, which is why uh, we've undertaken this mission together with the government of Maldives. So I like to think that it's about us appreciating all of the amazing things that it does for us. Yeah. Um, and renewing our attachment to our ocean and our planet so that we can start respecting it and being better stewards of our ocean. Well, keep us updated and thank you so much for your video diary, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you. And the Nectin team are offering live lessons from the deep ocean for schools, so get your teacher to check it out. That's about it from FYI today, but remember, we want your stories too. You can have your say or even report on a story you want to get out there, right here on FYI. We are always after your views and stories. The best way to do that is to get a teacher to set up an FYI news club at your school. All members have the chance to report for us. For details of how you can set up an FYI news club at your school and report for FYI, 
head to our webpage first.news forward slash FYI. That's it for this week. See you next time for more info.